Hi, I'm Scott Gerst. And I'm Michelle Cummings with Training Wheels. You're about to view a video of an old game called Simon Says with a new twist. When I played Simon Says as a child, I always was worried about making a mistake and being eliminated. But what if you could play as long as you wanted to without worrying about making mistakes and without worrying about being out? So this video is for you, the facilitator, to take the old game of Simon Says from an elimination game to a teaching tool. Let's, Let's play. play. All right, everybody, we're going to play a game today that you probably played when you were a little kid, but you probably haven't played for a while. How many of you remember a game when you were a kid called Simon Says? How many people? Are... All right, awesome. Now, in the old version of Simon Says, what happened if you made a mistake? You are out, right? And then the walk of shame starts and you have to leave the game, right? So we have actually changed the rules to this version, or to Simon Says, to make it into more of a teaching tool. So here in a minute, so there's going to be a few new rules to the old version of Simon Says. Now most of the rules are the same. So in a minute, I'm going to start the game and uh, I'm going to start with some instructions. But you don't do any of those instructions until I start that statement with Simon Says. So just like the old game. Now in the new game, here's one of the new rules is that if you make a mistake in this new version of Simon Says, you're just going to give yourself a point. Okay, so nobody gets out, you just give yourself a point. And you just keep track of your own points and your own mind. Nobody really cares how many points you get. Ideally, you would like to have as few points possible, but there's going to be somebody in the room that has 27. They're like, woohoo, I got 27. So, <laughs> so, but ideally, you want as few points possible. Now, another new rule in the game is that in a minute, I'm going to start the game, and I'm going to say, the game of Simon Says has officially begun. Now, the game will continue until you hear me say, the game of Simon Says is officially over. That's a very important rule to remember, okay? Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do during this game. It's going to be both hands up, both hands down, right hand up, right hand down, left hand up, left hand down, and one thing that you might not have seen before is going to be clapping position. So if you hear me say, Simon says clapping position, it looks like this. Okay? Now, and I want you to make the noise because it sounds really cool when everyone does it together. Okay? <laughs> so let's practice that one before the game starts. So Simon says clapping position. <laughs> See, it's cool, isn't it? It's really cool. All right. So then I'm going to say, you know, clap once, clap twice, but you don't do it until Simon says. Okay? Um, now, flinching totally counts as a point. So if I say, you know, right hand up and you go, oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> you see that over there? Totally counts as a point. So, and again, the points don't really matter. So just give yourself a point. Okay? Now, are there any questions before we begin? No questions? All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started then. The game of Simon Says has officially begun. Phase one, I like to call the, um, the teaching phase, where I'm just kind of grooming you, getting you used to the motions and the actions and things like that. <laughs> Ready, both hands up. Oh, good job. Simon Says, both hands up. Both hands down. Simon Says, both hands down. Right hand up. Simon says right hand up, right hand down. Simon says right hand down. Both hands up, Simon says both hands up. Good job, you guys. Both hands down, Simon says both hands down. Left hand up, Simon says left hand up. Left hand down, Simon says left hand down. Both hands up, Simon says both hands up. Simon says both hands down. Right hand up, Simon says right hand up. Right hand down, Simon says right hand down. Both hands up, Simon says both hands up. Both hands down. Simon says both hands down. Good job, you guys. So that's the end of phase one. Okay, but I always like to do a quick check-in just to see how people are doing. So raise your hand if you still have zero points. Anybody? All right, great job. <laughs> Simon says raise your hand if you still have zero points. Nice. Go ahead and put your hands down. Good job. Uh, Simon says go ahead and put your hands down. <laughs> there you go. Good job. <laughs> phase two, we're going to move into that now. I'm going to throw some tricks at you in phase two, so be prepared, because uh, phase two is pretty hard. All right, here we go. Everyone take a big, deep breath in and out. Oh, good job. Simon says take a big, deep breath in and out. All right, good job. All right, both hands up. Simon says both hands up. Both hands down. Simon says both hands down. Both hands up. Simon says both hands up. Both hands down. Simon says both hands up. Oh, good job. Both hands down. Simon says both hands up. Oh, good job. <laughs> Simon says both hands down. Left hand up. Simon says left hand up. Left hand down. Simon says left hand up. Simon says left hand down. Good job. Right hand up. Simon says right hand up. Right hand down. Simon says right hand up. Simon says right hand down. Good job. Go ahead and shake that out. Woo! 
<laughs> Simon says, go ahead and shake that one out. <sighs> good job, good job. All right, now we're going to move into phase three now. Now, like I said, phase one was kind of the building phase, skill building phase. Phase two was hard, it was kind of the testing phase. And now phase three, we're going to go into that. Phase three, we're just going to throw in some clapping position, wrap it, wrap it up and bring it on home. Just have some fun, all right? All right, so Simon says take a big deep breath in and out. Right hand up. Simon says right hand up. Right hand down. Simon says right hand down. Simon says clapping position. <laughs> clap once. <laughs> Simon says clap once. Clap twice. Simon says clap twice. Clap once. Simon says clap continuously. Good job. Good job. But stop. But stop. Oh, you guys. Stop. Simon says stop. That's just fun for Simon. <laughs> Simon says clap once. Clap twice. Almost, almost. Simon says clap once. Clap twice. <laughs> Simon says clap once. Clap twice. Good job. Go ahead and put your hands down. Simon says put your hands down. Simon says put your right hand up. Simon says take your right arm and cross in front of your body and then pat yourself on the back for a job well done. The game of Simon Says is officially over. Great job. Great job. Before you begin the game, make sure everyone knows the rules. Believe it or not, there's going to be some people in your audience that have never played Simon Says before. So make sure you go over the basic rules first and then add in the new rules. The new rules are going to be something they've never seen before, so you need to explain those well. Hi everybody! Hi! That's better. My name's Scott and we're about to play a game called Simon Says. For the purpose of this game, I will be the leader. When the game begins, when the game has officially begun, I will begin to give you instructions and ask you questions. If I proceed in instruction with the word Simon Says, I want you to do what I ask you to do to the best of your ability. If I proceed a question with the word Simon Says, I want you to answer the question to the best of your ability. Any questions or instructions that are not preceded by Simon Says are invalid. They should be ignored, and you should do nothing and say nothing. So if you make a mistake, I want you to give yourselves a point. Okay, that includes flinching. So if I say put your hands up and you do that, that still counts. Okay? For the purpose of this game, we'll be working with the honor system, so you'll keep track of your own points. At no time are you out of the game, unless you choose to be. And if you want to be out of the game while we're playing, all you have to do is move off to the side so I know that you're not part of the game anymore. So for the purpose of this game, we'll just keep the instructions really simple. This is hands up. This is hands down. If I say turn to the right, I want you to turn 90 degrees to your right. It's a quarter turn for you non-engineers. <laughs> I say turn to the left, I want you to turn 90 degrees to your left. Also, you need to make sure that everyone can see you. So whether that means you standing on a chair or up on a stage, it's important that the entire audience has a visual on you as Simon. And also, one last thing, make sure you ask the group if they have any questions. It's hard as the participants to ask questions once the game has begun, so make sure you ask the audience before you begin if anyone has any questions. Are the points important? To some people they are, to some people they're not. I find that sometimes in my groups I'll have people that get two points and others that get 27. But that's not a value judgment about who they are or how they play the game. It just means that people learn differently at different rates. It's why we continue to play the game and allow people to get better. I'd like to take a moment to talk about the three phases of Simon Says. Phase one I like to call the skill building phase. That's where you're letting the participants get used to the actions and the motions and have a chance for success. Here we go. We're going to start really simple just to make sure everybody understands all the commands and stuff. So let's get started. Everybody put your hands up. That's good. Simon Says put your hands up. Put your right hand down. Put your left hand down. Simon Says put your left hand down. Turn to the right. Simon Says turn to the right. Put both hands up. Phase two is where your actions don't match your words. And phase two is pretty hard. I usually tell the participants before we do phase two that it's going to be hard, just to warn them that they, that they need to be really good listeners in phase two. Simon says hands up. Simon says hands down. Hands up. Simon says hands down. Simon says hands up. OK, Simon says hands down. OK. <laughs> And phase three is just where we throw in some fun. That's where I like to throw in clapping position and just have some fun with them in phase three. Okay, here we go, everybody. Clapping position. 
Simon says clapping position. You clap once. Simon says clap once. Again. Simon no. says again. Clap once. Simon says clap once. Again. Put your hands down. Simon says put your hands down. Simon says clapping position. Clap once. Simon says clap once. And then we have these two other little phases that are called, that I like to call the distraction phases. The distraction phases happen in between phase one and two, and then between phase two and three. And that's usually where you make a statement like, all right, great job, you guys, that's the end of phase one. And what usually happens then is everyone's guard gets let down just a little bit to where then you do things like, all right, great job, you guys, shake that one out, ah. And then they're not ready for it, so they'll actually do it and they'll make a mistake. All right, nice job, everybody. That is the end of phase one. It looks a little bit tense. Go ahead and shake out that, shake it out. No, no, not yet. <laughs> Simon says shake it out a little bit. At least I'll let you know. Simon says stop shaking out. That's scary. <laughs> And so those times I like to use as a debrief to talk about it's easy to rack up some points when our guards go down when the dis in those distraction times. So those are kind of the three structured phases and then the two distraction phases in between for the full structure of the game of Simon Says. Sometimes people ask us, how do you keep from getting confused as a Simon Says leader? And the answer is, we don't. We get confused sometimes up front which is why I like to have a fallback sequence, usually about four commands that I know by heart that I can do in sequence at a moment's notice if I get lost that will bring me back to a neutral position. Here's my basic four command fallback sequence. Simon says put your right hand up, Simon says put your left hand up, Simon says put your right hand down, Simon says put your left hand down. If you practice that and can do that by heart, you'll always have a fallback sequence in case you get lost. In phase one, participants will get used to the cadence of your voice. You can use that to your advantage in phase two. Watch this example of how my voice inflection changes. Both hands up. Simon says both hands up. Both hands down. Simon says both hands up. So my voice went down, but the word was up. Here's another example of how my voice inflection does not match what I'm saying. Right hand up. Simon says right hand up. Right hand down. Simon says right hand up. Left hand up. Simon says left hand down. Left hand down. Simon says left hand up. Here's some things that you can do as a leader to make phase two a little more challenging. The first one I call the type one. Everybody put your hands up. Simon says put your hands down. This one I call a type two. Simon says put your right hand up. Simon says put your left hand down. You can also do this with hips and head. Watch. Everybody put your hands on your hips. Simon says put your hands on your head. Simon says put your hands on your hips. If you're lucky enough to have great weather and a great outdoor space, you can move your group outside and play Simon Says in the great outdoors. Take the basic game and then get people moving. You can actually have them march or walk in a specific direction and still do the basic commands while they're moving. It gets them out, it gets them moving around. You can actually use it to have people move in your program from one space to another. And sometimes just the mere act of walking makes the basic commands seem a lot more complicated, adds just another level of distraction, and takes the game to a different level. Simon says put your right hand up. Simon says put your left hand down. Simon says put your left hand up. Okay, everybody stop where you are. Simon says watch out for the tree. <laughs> Simon says put your right hand down. Oh, I'm loving this. I'm totally loving this. Okay, Simon says put your left hand up. Simon says put your left hand down. Very good. Okay, everybody stop. Simon says put your right hand up. Simon says turn to the right. <laughs> oh, God. If there's people that typically, you know those people that always drift to the back of the room? All you have to do is do this. Okay, Simon says everybody turn around. Okay, now suddenly the front of the room is the back of the room. So the people, when you set up the game, those people that usually drift to the back, you can kind of, and you can do all four corners. You can work all four corners of the room, okay? So see if it's a little easier in the back there, okay? Everybody put your hands up. Simon says put your hands up. As you can see from the video, this version of Simon Says is a lot of fun but there are a lot of teachable moments that you can pull from this activity as well. For instance, if you're working with a group that needs to focus on leadership, there are a lot of questions that you can pull out of the activity that focus on leadership. 
Let's say you're working with a sports team. Maybe you need to talk about focus and how do you stay focused in a game. Or maybe if you're working with young kids, you need to talk about integrity. Did you actually count that flinch as a point? And you could also just talk about if you make a mistake, you need to learn from it and move on. And so here are some other great ideas that you could use for the debrief of Simon Says. All right, guys, great game. I just want to stop and debrief a little bit after this game and just kind of talk about what you liked about this version of Simon Says compared to the old one. So, so let's hear from a couple people. What were some things that you liked about this version of Simon Says compared to the old way? I really liked how um, nobody got out. You got to keep playing through the whole thing. You didn't mess up and then had to go sit in the corner. Allowing people to stay in the game and not be eliminated lets them learn from their mistakes. This version of Simon Says lets people experiment and get better. Uh, I like the fact that you talked about hard, the different faces were hard and everybody could interpret it in their own way of it's harder for one person, it might not be harder for another. Exactly. And then also as leaders, there's times where, you know, as a leader, there's times where it's not going to be as difficult for the groups that you're leading. There's other times it's going to get hard. And as a leader, it's good to recognize those times and kind of front load and let people know, you know what, this next week at work is going to be really hard, you guys. So we need to really focus, really pay attention to what we're doing. Um, and so there's lots of great analogies like that that you can pull from the game of Simon and put into your debriefs with your groups. I liked how you are able to use different types of learning styles. So people that are very visual, um, maybe could close their eyes or look down at the floor, or people that are usually up in the front can be in the back, or you just kind of have to learn different ways of, and different strategies on how to play the game. Topics you can discuss around communication would be, do you anticipate what is about to be said? Sometimes thinking can override our listening. What is seen can override what is heard, and what you do has more effect than what you say. Anybody else? Yeah, I really liked how in this game it was safe to make mistakes. Like, it was encouraged and it didn't matter. I really liked how you as a leader uh, responded in a positive manner when people made mistakes, so. When discussing the topic of focus with our sports teams and work groups, we can ask the questions, how do we handle distraction? How do we block out the things that are irrelevant to us accomplishing the task at hand? And can we let go of our mistakes so that one mistake does not become many mistakes? All right, guys, thanks so much for coming. I hope you guys really enjoyed this new version of Simon and that you actually take this activity and use it with the groups that you facilitate. Don't be nervous to make a mistake. It's OK if you make a few mistakes the first time you try it. That's the nature of the game. So I hope you guys had a great time and go out and use it. Here are a few tips on how to lead Simon. Make sure you go slow. Slow works better. Don't get in a rush because that's when you might get nervous. Fall back on a comfortable sequence to recenter yourself. Be sympathetic with them. If somebody makes a mistake and you give the same command and they get it right the next time, celebrate with them. Give a thumbs up when someone or everyone starts to get it. Be an encouraging Simon. Be a leader that people want to follow. Challenge people, but also allow them to succeed. Don't give them too much too fast or it will overwhelm them. We hope you have found this video to be helpful and fun. We put this video together to help you gain the skills and the confidence necessary to facilitate Simon Says with your groups. That which you practice, you get better at. So watch this video as many times as you need to to become a confident Simon. So go play. Simon Says, go play. Yeah. Simon Says you can be loud and slow. Okay, I'm gonna chant a little bit, here we go. Simon says, say ho. Ho! Okay, that was a little weak. Let's try it again. Simon says, say ho. Ho! Okay, we're almost there. Just a little more energy, okay? A little more. Here we go. Somebody say ho. Ho! <laughs> Thank you. You can already get him in the slow clap. <laughs>